Welcome to our second video on stack multiplication. And here we're going to look at more examples of two digit numbers times a one digit number. But we're going to warm up with a one digit number times another one digit number. And let me kill that right there. Okay, so what's happening? Well, again, with, with stack multiplication, as we talked about in the last video, what we're doing is writing one number over another. And all we really need to know is our multiplication tables up to nine. So if we know these combinations, then really what we, we can do is multiply any number with the stack method once we know our nine multiplication tables. Um, so how does this work? Well, stack multiplication combines the numbers we're looking at. So here, this means 9 times 6, and that is 54. So we write the 4 in the, in the 1's place and the 5 in the 10's place. So 9 times 6 is 5 10's and 4 1's. And we have to always pay attention to place value while we're doing this. Otherwise, I think our answers won't make much sense to us. Here, 6 times 7 or 7 times 6, we can read it either way. That is 42. Four tens and two ones. Here, six times eight or eight times six is 48. Four tens and eight ones. And here, six times six, or of course, six times six, same thing, is three tens and six ones, or 36. And we can extend this with stack multiplication to two digit combinations. So now let's deal with some two to one digits. Let's try a couple of examples. 20 times 4, 33 times 5, 76 times 8, and 99 times 9. So how do we deal with this? Well, with the stack method, we take our digit that's on the bottom and combine that and multiply that by the different place values above. So here in the first problem, we can think of 20 times 4 as the number 4 times 0 ones. That's the first combination. And 4 times 0 gives you nothing. So you put a 0 in the ones place. And now 4 times 2, which is really in the background, we can think of that as 4 times 20. But with stack multiplication, we can think of it simply as 4 times 2. That's an 8. But when we put the 8 down, we're really saying that's 80, because 4 times 20, this 2 represents two, tw 2 tens, is 80. And our answer is 8 tens and 0 ones, or 80. In the next problem, 5 times 33, or 33 times 5, we're going to take the 5 and combine it with 3 ones, and then multiply it by 3 tens. So 5 times 3 ones is 15. So we put the 5 here, because in 15 there are 5 ones. And we could put the 1 here for 15, but, but with the typical standard algorithm of the stack method, it's we put the 110 up here. And it keeps things neater for us, especially for tougher problems. So now, 15 is kind of split up. You can see it here and here. That's our 15. All we did, though, was put the 5 1s down here and the 110 up there. Remember, 15 is just made up of 110 and 5 1s. And then... We can't forget about this 110, otherwise our problem won't make sense. We have another 5 times another 3. And 5 times 3 is 15. We add the other 10 to get 16. So the answer is 100, 6 tens, and 5 ones, or 165. Of course, in the background, we can think of this as 5 times 30, which is 150, plus another 10, which makes 160. So that would have added up to 165. Same answer, but we do want to have a little bit of understanding of what's happening. In the next one, we have 8 times 76. So we're going to combine this 8 with the 6 and then the 7 tens. But we're only going to think of it in the stack method as 8 times 6 plus 8 times 7. So 8 times 6 is 48. So we put the 8 down here and the 4 up here because 48 is made from 4 tens. We now put it in the tens column and eight ones. Eight times seven 
is 56. 56 and 4 is 60. So our answer is 60 and 8. Or 6 one hundredths, 0 tens, and 8 ones. Because here, when we had 8 times 7, that was 8 times 70. We said it was 56, but if you notice that 8 times 7 is 56, 8 times 70 is 560. You notice that similarity there, they both have a 56 in it. Because what we do in the stack method, when we say 8 times just the tens place value, you can think of it in terms of just the unit multiplication, which is 8 times 7. That other 0, when you add the 70, all it does is add zeros onto your product here. And that's the nice thing about the stack method. In other words, we're able to get away with thinking this we're able to get away with thinking of this as 8 times 7. We get 56, add 4 more 1s to get 60, or in reality, add 40, because right that 4 is from 48, and so that's 4 tens. So that we thought it was 8 times 7 is 56, and then we added 40. Put a little hour there, and then we added 40. Here we could have then added 4, and this would give us 600. And this gave us 600. Oops, this gave us, sorry, 60. And this gave us 600. You see the similarity between these two processes, but we're using place value. So when we put the 60 down, we're putting it right here. And that 60, when we put it over here, really represents 600. 6 one hundredths and 0 tenths. I'm just talking through the background of this process because as the problems become more difficult, and we're unsure about the steps, we should be able to step back and think about what we're actually doing. Like in this one, 99 times 9. Well, 9 is going to be distributed or multiplied to the two place values above. 9 times 9 is 81. Let's put a 1 here, 8 up there. That's 80 and 1. 9 times another 9 is really 9 times 90, but let's think of it as 9 times 9, which is 81 again plus another 8 is 89. But when we put that 89 down, we're really saying 800 and 9 tens and 1 ones. And that's our product. Now just before we move on, um, we might encounter some other fun things as these become more difficult. What if we tried 100 times 9? Let's just talk about this one. 9 times 0 gives us nothing, so no ones. 9 times 0 tens still gives us nothing. So it gives us no tens. But 9 times 1 gives us 9 or 9 one hundredths because this is the hundredths value. And in the next video, we'll look at these combinations. All right, thanks.